Hello and welcome back. So far, we have taken a an existing model and we've adjusted it, we've reworked the topology, adjusted the shapes and the proportions so that we're getting a little bit closer to looking like our reference uh, concept image. We've also applied a full set of UVs which has allowed us to then create the textures. And I've not covered creating the textures in this uh, series of videos. It's quite simple and everybody has their own approach really. But once you've got those UVs, you can then take them into Photoshop and you can use an unwrapped, uh, some unwrapped photo reference to create your diffuse map. Um, I then took that and the model into Substance Painter and then I that allowed me to tweak it further and then output the roughness map and some other textures that I needed. So you can probably tell the scene has changed a little bit more from when we previously left it. Now all I've done is I've, I've rebuilt the eye models because I wasn't happy with the ones that were in there before. I've adjusted them. I've also added in, if I open up this environment group here, so we have a floor model and this is just going to allow the light to reflect up um, and give you a slightly deeper ambient occlusion in the scene. I've added a sky dome and this is an Arnold sky dome and this is the sphere you can see here. And to that I've just linked a HDR texture. I open up the attribute editor. Into colour, we have our sky dome here into colour. I've just got our backdrop .hdr texture and you can find lots of uh, free HDR images floating around on the internet so just find whichever one suits the look of the render that you're after. So I've also added in a key directional light as well and this is just going to give us a few more highlights and also some deeper shadows. So at the moment, we are just working with a Lambert material applied to it. If we look in this viewport, and I've just set this up with the main camera to sort of mimic um, how the main render is going to be, the, the, the correct view that we're going to render from. I'm just going to go in here and enable the Arnold renderer, and we can just see how things are looking so far. So yeah, it looks pretty flat. So let's start building the skin shader. I'm just going to go to the uh, general editors, hypershade, rendering editors, hypershade, sorry. And I'm going to come down to the Arnold tab down here and go to shader. And what we're going to do is we're going to use an AI standard surface shader here. So I'm just going to create that. Let's just select the skin and we'll assign that material. So if I move this over here, we can see that the scene's updated now. It's a lot more glossy, you know, there's a lot more depth to it. And this is with the new shader applied. So I'm just going to close this down. I'm going to open up the attribute editor over here. It just means that we can see things a little clearer. Um, Let's just rename this first. We'll call this AI Skin, so we know that that's going to be the shader for the skin. It's good to keep on top of uh, naming conventions and things as you're building your scene. Let's just find that again. So here we have the shader. And as you can see, there's lots of different attributes that you can play around with. Now, as we're starting to build our skin, this might look a little intimidating. You've got subsurface, which we obviously need for the skin. So where do you start? Well, luckily, because this is a standard surface shader, this is more of a generic shader, but it has lots of built-in properties, which can account for lots of different elements and surfaces. And as a quick way to start, we're just going to go up to presets. If I can, let's just move this over here a bit. So you can see when I actually click on 
presets. So as you can see under presets, we've got all these different elements that we can use. Wax, plastic, rubber, and also down here we've got skin. So all I'm going to do is go to skin and replace, and that's just going to replace all the settings and all the attributes with the ones that are going to be more beneficial for us as we build our skin shader. And there we can see it updating the window here. Now it's still not right, but this is giving us um, a really good foundation to start working upon. If we move down to the subsurface tab now, you can see that it's been changed. We've got these different colors and values in here. But next to this, next to the subsurface color tab, uh, well, attribute, we've also got these three lines. If I click on that, we can then change this even further. And we can see down here we have skin one and skin two. So we can change those and let's have a look and see which one we, we can use to start us off. So that's skin one. Let's go to skin two. So skin two is a lot paler. As you can see with the, the subsurface scattering that's going on in there, we've almost lost the definition in her nose and her lips. So let's just, let's use skin one and just see how that goes. So now we have a basic uh, skin attributes set up and ready to work. We can start piping in some of our textures. So let's first connect the diffuse. Now we don't go up here and use it, the uh, base color attribute up here. Instead, we actually use a subsurface color attribute. So I'm just going to select that, select file, and then I'm just going to go to our diffuse. So this is the unwrapped uh, head texture. So there we can see that's looking much better already. And it's at this point that this this viewport is maybe too grainy for us to uh, really see the detail that we need. So I'm just going to change the settings for the, the render settings up here. So open up the render settings and I'm going to change camera AA to maybe, let's change that to four. And that's just going to give a, a, a finer render. Now, as you can see, we can see a bit more detail in here now. And I don't want to rush ahead and start producing proper renders to work with at this stage, because I only want a very basic overview of how the texture and the shaders are starting to look. But that's just a little tip. If your uh, viewport render here isn't looking crisp enough, if it's looking too fuzzy, just adjust the camera AA attribute in the Arnold Render tab. So we've added the diffuse texture into there. So let's bring back the attribute editor. So if you're looking at your skin and it's looking too waxy maybe, uh, like there's too much of the subsurface scattering being applied, you maybe need to adjust your scale value here. So it also depends on the scale of the model in your scene. If your model's too big or it's not following real world units, you'll need to adjust the scale so that the subsurface scattering works uh, better to the scale of the model. Now I'm wondering if this is looking maybe a little too waxy, so we are look, losing some of the details. So I'm going to try, I'm going to adjust the scale. Maybe let's half it and see how that looks. Now obviously we still need to apply the roughness map. Um, and play around with the specularity and things like that. But just there, I can start to see that re by reducing the scale, we're starting to get some of the details back. So I might reduce it a little bit more to 0.3. And as we're playing around with this, later on, we can open up a render window and then we can zoom in on some of the, like around the creases around the nose and, and places like that. And we can go back and we can increase the scale again 
if it's not look if we're not getting the correct amount of subsurface scattering. So let's leave that as it is. It's looking okay in the render view here. So what we're going to do next is look at the specularity. Now first of all, I'm just going to go in and I'm going to connect our roughness map. And again, this is one that I outputted from Substance Painter. So just connecting that in, that softened the highlights on the cheek and on the nose. And there's one more t uh, texture that I want to apply at this stage. So let's open up the attribute editor again. So I'm going to go down to the geometry tab and I'm going to apply a normal map. So again, go to file. I'm going to change this to tangent space normals and then point to the normal texture here. And this is just going to add a little bit of variety to the surface of the skin. You've got the cracks in the lips, you know, some subtle wrinkles and things. So when we come to do our final render, you'll see a bit more of the, de the skin detail in that. So from here we have our the basics of our skin shader set up. We've got the bump map, we've got the uh, diffuse in there, we've got some uh, basic skin shader set up. So I'm just going to turn this off. I'm going to switch this to rendering and I'm going to just go to open the Arnold render view. Let's just move that out there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a render in this instead, just so that we can zoom in and have a look at uh, how it's working so far. So I'm just going to click play for now. And obviously we need to, uh, I need to work on the eye textures and her, uh, her top here. So this is looking different. Well, slightly different to the viewport render, so it's always worth coming in and uh, doing these tests as well. And obviously I can zoom in. And so far I think that's looking quite nice. You know, that's giving us a really good base to build upon. And what we can do is we can also fine tune by just selecting, by just selecting an area like so, so it'll only render that area. And again, let's go to our render. Let's increase this to maybe six. We can also increase some of these as well. Now these are going to increase the quality of those specific areas. But it's also going to increase the render time. So now you see that's taking a lot longer to render. But it's looking less grainy. So as a starting point for working on the skin shader, we've got, you know, it's taken what, five minutes to just apply the standard surface shader We've used the preset skin when we've just piped in our textures. We've not even started playing around with any of the settings, really. You know, we've got our specular here. And just like with the uh, subsurface color, we also have the option here for some uh, presets. So skin is already in here, but because we use the preset up here, that will already be set. So there's no point in playing around with that. You can also adjust the specular color and just play around with all of these different settings. But that's just the basic skin set up. And that's just the point of this video, just to show you how quickly 
you can get some basic skin uh, shaders and materials set up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to play around with this texture a little bit more. Um, I'm also going to add in some for the eyes, get those in, because she's looking a bit strange at the moment. And then what I'll do is I'll just pause the video here. I'm going to play around with them a little bit more and then you can see what I've been doing. And then we'll look at the render before we then move on to working on t uh, the hair. So I've been playing around with the settings a little bit more and I've also set up the eyes. And I've not really tweaked much to be honest. You know, I've changed the colour of the specular just so it's a bit a slight blue tint to it. I, re I increased the scale back to 0 0.5 again. You know, again, just playing around with those values just to get the look that I want for this particular portrait. And you may want it set up completely differently, but you know, once you now know the basics of just setting up a basic skin shader, just go in and experiment. You know, we've got coat, op attributes, sheen, emission, although I've not used the sheen. The coat just adds a bit more, another level of specularity to the overall skin. And that's pretty much all I've done for this particular piece. Obviously there's more advanced options that you can go into, but for this tutorial it's just a basic overview, giving you the foundation so that you can make your own portraits. And then you can take what you've learned and expand upon it later. So I've also just played, applied a very basic material to her jumper there. Now she is, even though the skin is getting a bit closer to what we're after, she still looks strange. And that's because we've got no, apart from these eyebrows, which at the moment they're just textures. And I may end up keeping the textures because they, they've worked out quite nicely. But you can also add them in, which we will look at in the next video, using uh, XGen. Now I added them in now because I don't think the eyes look right until you've got the eyebrows in. I think it, once you've got the eyebrows in, it sort of helps to frame the eyes and gives you a better overall picture of how the face is looking. But also the eyes are still looking a little strange and that's because we need to add in the eyelashes. So what I'm going to do now, this render's nearly done. This is just a test render as well. So it's just still looking a little grainy. But it's given us a good idea of what we've got so far and what we've got to work with. So what I think we'll do next is, in the next video, we'll start to look, investigate XGen. And we'll start to look at adding the eyelashes, the eyebrows and the hair.